Well, it's Cast Ranger episode 350. It's a very special episode, and by special, I mean not special at all. Everything is perfectly normal. Oh, yeah, no, it's great. I'm happy to be here again. <laughs> oh, I can't... I... It's really starting to fucking bug me how shitty your mic is, you know? All right, one second. There, is that better? That better? Oh my god, cue the laugh track, because Lane's here in the studio! You didn't mute your mic. Twice. There's two lanes. We are live! Connect. Loading. Broadcast. Tempered Zeal! Bluecaster? Super Ichi! Loud and Impulsive! Craycaster! Late! Illuminating the Tokuverse. Goldcaster Garza. A spark of courage, the power of dreams. Orange Caster, Global Soft Perka. Broadcasting hundreds of opinions across the world. Radio Sentai Cast Ranger. On air. Welcome to Radio Sentai Cast Ranger. It's episode 350. Episode Melodic. Oh, it did the 350. Beautiful. How perfect that it's an episode about the most beautiful Pokemon because the most beautiful boy in all of Pickering is live in the studio tonight. Oh, oh thank you. So yes, I have returned in person <laughs> because... I said the most beautiful boy in Pickering, Gar. Are you in Pickering? You're from Denville. <laughs> When it's the Dunville Beauty Pageant episode, you'll have your shot. All right, the uh, Goldcaster Garzilla, everybody. Anyways, Anyways left um, the building. Hi, so yeah, I'm back because after, in pop form. Yeah, because I got um got my full two doses of vaccine, and I waited the two weeks to let sick in, so I'm here. Hooray! Yay! So I will try to be. I'm going to make it my mission to be here every Friday. Uh, in person, but there may be days where I can't, especially once I get a job again, so... Yeah. But I'll do my best to be here for credit. Alright, so, uh, if you're new here and don't know what the fuck is going on, uh, we are a bunch of Toronto nerds who hang out every week and talk about Kamen Rider, Super Sentai, and the third thing! And, uh, yeah, Lane's been on, Dis been on Discord for the last big chunk of episodes because of the pandemic and moving. Yeah. But, uh, we're finally reunited! It feels so good. And we're going to see Space Jam 2 on Sunday! Yeah, Gar, come Where here! Where did he go? I don't is know. He, is he alright? Yeah, he just stormed out for a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, he's like, can I go back? I got some water, I'm here. Yeah, he'll come He'll come back when he's good and ready. He'll be back again someday. Some Gar. Alright, uh, so this week we're talking about Saber episode 43. Uh, Zenkaiser episode 19, and our special topic for the day is Fies episodes 1 and 2, and Gar's back. AKA. Sadly, I could only watch some of them, but that's okay. AKA Kiba the show. Yeah. Kiba the show? Yes, Gar? Yeah, are you okay? Emily, Emily's not saying anything. Okay. <laughs> No, I just wanted to see how far these headphones would reach until they disconnected. Oh, okay. I was also hungry, so I, uh... Got some peanut butter M&M's, apparently. Yeah. Peanut butter on what? You got peanut butter M&M's. I put peanut butter on regular M&M's. Really? No, it's peanut butter M&M's. Because <laughs> I can honestly imagine that being a thing that, like, would be do. done. Yeah. No, I mean, I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how what's stopping you well uh, so remind, get some so reminds me and of, also i'm on the diet oh well that'll that'll do it so it reminds me of when my friend made a pair made a shot for shot recreation of white and nerdy by weird al and oh there's a line in the music video where i put all of my i put all i, I order all, all of my yeah, I order all my sandwiches with mayonnaise, and he had, like, a lump of mayonnaise on the sandwich. And after we finished filming, we were like, no, eat it. He hates eat mayonnaise. It. Eat it. He hated mayonnaise. <laughs> He's a, but is he also a Wizard Mind Sweeper he could play for days? No. 
because that part was green screen. Yeah. Skills are gonna leave you amazed. No, because he <laughs> fingers fuck- moving so fast, they'll set the place to blaze. Yeah, <laughs> see, you know, blaze, blaze again. No, blaze left. Oh, probably to go watch Ultraman triggered. Mm. Look at me, I watch Ultraman. Oh, look at me, oh, Ultraman's so cool. Wait, why am I making fun of myself? <laughs> yeah. I'm the magical man from the land of light. Which got us a lovely problem. I come from the land of light and have nothing to do involving Christianity, even though our current villains are about hell and Satan. I was gonna say, isn't Ultraman Belial, which is clearly a devil name? Oh yeah, and the new villain just got announced called Evola, which is the Italian word for devil. I thought oh. you were gonna say his name was Evola. I thought you were gonna say Evola. Also, there was a villain in this special called Absolute Tartarus. <laughs> In which Tartarus is also the guard dog of hell. Yeah, the guard dog of hell. Yeah. No, 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 no Tartarus Cerberus. is the prison oh, wait, of Cerberus, hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Tartarus Cerberus is, like, is the, the guard dog. Cerberus, yeah, Cerberus yeah. is the dog. Yeah, Tartarus. also an evil human terrorist organization in Mass Effect. Yeah. I thought that was Cobra. Yeah. And also Tartarus is the tower from Persona 3. Yes. Okay. And also, uh, is mentioned a lot in Class of the Titans. All right, enough. <laughs> Yeah, where hey, Kronos was voiced by Megatron. Yeah, speaking of Megatron, I have a Megatron figure now. Yeah, I found one for each of you today when I was exploring. Yeah. yeah. All right, enough off topic, Ray. Let's get into Saber. Woo! So, I guess we can now say that this whole fucking B plot bullcrap between Kenzon and Disaster is now closed. Yeah. We have that up. Ep- this episode was almost entirely that. But like, okay, like, uh, so like, shot wise, like visuals, the way it was shot, the fight itself, all really cool. But for two characters, we barely know, barely seen, and we do not give two shits about. Like, there was no real point to any of this, and I get that they're trying to justify this by like saying. The disaster was created for no reason and on a whim, but the reason isn't necessarily an excuse in this case. This is something that should have been solved like 10, 15 episodes ago. Yeah, and I, can I just say that I'm actually super disappointed that I predicted wrong. I was so looking forward to like Ren going down the dark path and becoming a Megiddo, and that never happened. They literally spent at least half the show Dicking about, doing nothing, and eating ramen! Yeah, just eating ramen, staying in the same fucking place, and just thinking, why is Toma better than me? Why is he so strong when I've fucking trained my whole goddamn life to be, like, as strong and super powerful so I can impress my fucking, like, Kento? Why is this fucking novelist come out of fucking nowhere and just all of a sudden he's so super powerful and he knows all shit? Ugh, fucking hate him. I should be number one. Yeah. Smash. So like, just like they they did Kenzon wrong and like I he should have just been I I, I actually want I, I don't I'm sorry Emily I, I know this is gonna upset you but like I honestly kind of wish that like Kenzon just got the axe like he literally just. Was was really like this over his hyper as fuck, like super overconfident fucking rider, and then he thought he could take down everything and uh, save the world himself. Like it would have been awesome if they rid him as like he thought he was the the, the chosen one. Yeah. He was thought like he thought he'd be the one to save the world. I don't and then know he gets why himself- you think that would upset me because it makes a lot more sense it, from what they were seemingly leading up to to what ended up happening. Well, and I was mostly. Like whole arc should have been its own movie or something instead yeah like it should have been like the kenzon special or something yeah, exactly. you know what it, you know what it is this episode was exact pretty much just a retelling of their first fight the exact same thing happened it's just they fight and kenzon wins and disaster dies um but the no. only thing that happened this time was it took longer and it had its own insert theme no but they like they legit should have just written them as like this car, like I loved how Kenzon was in the in the very beginning, where he was just kind of like, "You're a fucking scrub. I'm better than you. Get I, good, I, I, noob. I, I train. I train every day." Get good. So yeah, like he should have just he should have been this cocky, overconfident guy this whole fucking time, and then like 
he gets into his head like by Reika that like oh Tom is a fucking traitor and stuff and it's like yeah, you really can't go gone fuck you I, I don't know why you think that I had like you well I, I was gonna, I, I was gonna say you were gonna be upset because I wanted him to die I wanted him to end up dying in the show okay I'm glad that you didn't say that which I do agree with I just thought for some reason you thought that I really liked Kenzan. No, no, no. Yeah, because I was thinking, like, I know he was kind of a jerk, but, like, no, he shouldn't have died, but I think that him going to the dark side and then be being like, crap, this is a bad idea, would have... It's like he was contemplating it for the entire thing, and then they ran out of time, and he was like, well, now I don't have time to be evil. <laughs> My problem with the Kenzon story throughout this whole show, there are two major points to the, the problem. Number one... The reason he started fucking off and hanging out with disaster and all this is not just because of Toma. He started questioning himself like, oh, what is true strength? What is what does it mean to be truly strong? And even at the end of this episode, there's no fucking answer. That's what was true. the point of the journey? Which leads into my second point of the problem with the Kenzon story. Absolutely fucking zero things he has done throughout the entire story has contributed to the actual plot happening. Can you can anyone think of one thing Ren did that was narratively significant? No. All I can think of is him appearing and like existing as a writer, and that is like the bare minimum, sadly. No. And you know what you know what the probably you know what the real truth behind these two probably were too? Like a movie or a special, that would make more sense. No. Kenzon and Disaster probably conceptualized and made when, like, the head writer was writing the show, whatever, like that. Then he went off to do whatever the fuck else he was doing. And so then, like, the other writers, they, the, in the show producers and everything, they had these two characters who they had, they had no idea what the fuck they were going to do with them. Because, like, you know, the head writer wrote them a certain way and they're like, we don't know what else to do with them. So literally, these two characters, they just had them off to the side doing their own thing because they did not know what to do with them. Also, also keep in mind that Disaster Suit Actor was busy because you know, he, he was Kiermay Red. That too! So like, God! Let, let, let me tell you my vision for how this, this arc should have happened. Please a much better do. version. Please do. Let's say that Ren, intimidated by Toma's strength, chose to walk the path of the Megiddo along with with uh, disaster, he was tempt. He gets tempted by the power that he sees the Megiddo has, and because he has a warped idea of what strength really is, he accepts the darkness of the Megiddo, becomes one himself, just like the three main ones did. And for a few episodes, maybe like ten-ish episodes, he's a villain, and it breaks everyone's hearts, and they don't like having to fight him. But when Toma comes at him with his new power up, whether it's elemental or crossover or whatever, and he brings Ren to his knees, and he almost kills him, but he refuses because he knows there's still some good left in him. And that reignites the soul of justice within Ren. And in a last ditch sacrificial maneuver, you know all those books of the people that we saw in this episode? In a last ditch effort, he heroically saves them all, but gets killed by Storius in the process. That would have been such a good A act. noble sacrifice, character development, narratively significant. That's what should have happened. Thank you. Exactly. That wasn't what happened, though, and that's not the truth. Yeah. No, but like the fight between the two and the visuals and shots we got. Wow, super good. They even they even put in the new insert theme, Will Save Us, sing, sung by May. Why would you put in a theme song sung by May for the fucking Ken's on disaster fight? She has nothing to do with this. Also, there's this- Just like the entire episode. Maybe just she like just sang show. the song and it doesn't actually have anything to do with her. It's just also, the person who plays her singing the song. Also, also but then why her? Also, they, they've, been doing this new, they've been doing this new habit where like something happens like with a character and then the next episode, they're like all in the room discussing stuff, and it's like, and like May's like, oh yeah, I met Luna by the way, and she ran away, and they're like, you're just telling us this now? Three episodes now, we've gotten characters doing something, and then someone else is like, why did she tell us this before? No, but the reason this time is May was embarrassed to tell them about it because she's a terrible fucking babysitter, as she's usual. A babysitter, yeah. And then when <laughs> just, like, just like I, I'm Doctor Hibbert leaning over Luna's body. Caused by bad, bad babysitting. babysitting. <laughs> Bump on the <laughs> noggin. No, 
but then the, like Ichi and Garu here we were watching it or whatever like that but like so they show like disaster like fighting Ren or whatever like that and like Ren's on the ground and disaster is like about to like slash against Ren like in his face so it's like uh, so you see the blade coming down cuts to fucking commercial yeah. and I it was so quick it cut away so fast that was the funniest shit I've ever seen I died so yeah remember Remember last week when disaster swiped at Toma, they cut the commercial, and when they came back, that hadn't happened yet? For like a two minutes? They oh fucking my... did it again! Yep, they did. <laughs> like, what is happening in Toei's editing bay? Like, last week's episode should have been when Toma goes, we can make, we'll make it. Cut to commercial, come back. Gar, yes, you got your hand up? Cool. I haven't done that in a while. Uh, <laughs> See, we're, this is what Cast Strangers would be like. I miss it so much. Uh, <laughs> maybe they sent all the good editors over to Superhero Senki. Mm. We'll see if that movie turns out to be good. Watch, well, well, watch that movie. It's like the fucking worst thing we've ever seen. Well, 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 like, you notice the last battle in this episode also had that they were all inside and then suddenly there's the next shot and they're all outside. Well, that's because if you paid attention, Charybdis like, does its like book scene change ability yeah it, it did and that it was a, it was great but the, what i'm saying is like that proves that they know how to put transitions in yeah all they have to do is turn know, the page yeah they know when to have it be like like when they did in xa where it was like they changed the background with the pixel effect or they knew how to do it with the, with the page turn. Yeah. But they also apparently are just like, let's cut a scene really weirdly with the commercial in the middle of it. What if it's I don't, like I don't know. What if it's like you're skimming future pages and then you go back to what you're already. If there was some sort of visual effect indicating that, maybe. But no, it's just terrible editing. Oh my god. <laughs> you know what? You know what was noted fun to notice in the opening? Tassel's still in it. Yeah, I saw him and I was just like, he's dead now. He deserves to be in it, though. Yeah. Um, it cuts to the scene where Tassel's doing his little dancing. It's just the empty room. <laughs> no! No, it's just Yuri standing in there looking sad. Yeah, just, no! <laughs> um, it's him in the afterlife. <laughs> so, finally, like, Reika and Durando, I can't remember fucking Ryoga's name. Ryoga. Yeah. You say the Shindai twins. Yeah. So... Like they finally and Butch. They, oh yeah, yeah. You, you were calling them like Team Rocket, but not Jesse and James. It's Cassidy and Butch. It's, it's Butch. Hi, <laughs> it's Butch. Um, it was just May patronizing the heck out of him, and she's just behind her, like, oh my god, you. Yeah, no. So they like they finally decided to take the sticks out of their fucking the swords out of their fucking asses and actually go like, <laughs> we will. <laughs> Come here, Matoma. We will help you. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> but yeah, no, we see like May, like, like, kind of like un unintentionally, I'm like sipping him. on fucking Durandal and teasing him, and like Rick is just like, what this bitch? My own Nissan. Yeah, like if so, if like Decker gave me a screenshot, not not a gift, please. Yeah, let's can't not... do gifts anymore. Yeah, by the way, for a the... screenshot of her. Angrily holding her sword up to her face. That's the face. Yeah, of the by the way, for those who weren't aware, uh, you might have noticed last week's episode got double uploaded. That's because Toei hit us with a fucking copyright strike. Yeah, Toei noticed us, bitches. We now have official confirmation that Toei has, in fact, watched our videos because I made them <laughs> watch it to appeal a copyright strike. Oh my gosh. Which they flatly denied, so I had to take down the episode. <laughs> And redo it, but the short, the end of it is we can't show gifts of the episodes anymore. I'm sorry, Decker. I I'm know, sorry. We know, that, we know that was your jam, and you were really good at it. Yeah. At least gifts of toy things. We can show gifts of other stuff. Yeah. But yeah, so I thought it was a weird choice that, like, with Saber to confront Storius, like finally he takes these two with him. Like, why not fucking Rintaro and Kento? Well, I mean, they've this all... two besties. I feel like it's partly because the Shindai twins haven't had as much to do lately. That face? <laughs> that face is amazing. Yeah, oh my, yeah, that's that's the face of the week for Saber. It's, <laughs> it's super good. That face, 100%, is the, is the definition 
of character assassination. Like, I like, I liked it when she was, like, a fucking stone-cold bitch! Which is and funny. I hate this kind of, like, kind of Onisan fucking thing she has now. It's funny, like, your character assassination, because she's trying to assassinate another character. Yeah, but just, like, <laughs> ever when she was, like, being taken seriously. A dark, schemey bitch? And then now she she's got, like, just the cool fucking robes. Siskon bro Onisam of simp thought. I just said a lot of words that I hate. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot of words in general. Back, one of our fans is happy scary, that we didn't call her character simp. I like that even in this. <laughs> I like that they, no, I like that this shot too. Like Ryoga, like doesn't even know how to, what like how to process what's happening oh right God. now. He's like, you can tell he doesn't talk to a lot of women. <laughs> you know what that photo reminds me of? Homer of the chair. And Bart's in the bathtub. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> um, we also get a cute little scene where, like, uh, Rintaro's, like, talking to Luna or whatever like that, and he's just like, oh, I'm talking above you, I'm sorry. And he, like, goes down to her level, and it's like, I, I, as a former homo sapien and now car under plates, and also still not a homo sapien. <laughs> It just reminded me so much of when you first met Toma and you just walked in on the lion and said similar things. It was kind yeah, of nice. Yeah, that smug ass face. Fucking, that's, I still have that. That's city. my boy. It's great. Um. So yeah. Uh. Saber, Durandal, and Sabala confront Storius and Charybdis, and as we go into this tower that he's hidden away in, the camera points yeah. up and we see a bunch of books. Uh, so yeah, remember a long time ago when they were putting uh, altar books into humans and turning them into Megiddo? Yeah, no. I do. Apparently Not this is where they all ended up. All those people that we thought were dead, but were apparently just captured within the ride book. <laughs> oh no, they're, they're dead now. They're dead now because <laughs> Corinthus fucking eats Corinthus them! Corinthus <laughs> The first Scooby-Doo movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, their faces, like, peeling out of the books. Oh, God. Yeah. That that movie, like, I remember as a kid, I used to really tolerate Scrappy-Doo. That movie made me fucking hate Scrappy-Doo. <laughs> no, he's a little, only, he's a little bitch. That's the universe's weird version of him that's not actually Scrappy-Doo. No, no. The best character will always be Scooby-Dumb. I love Scooby-Dumb. Scooby it's a Scooby-Dumb? Yeah, it's Scooby-Dumb. His cousin. Oh. His great cousin. He's, yeah, he's a, he's a great Scooby-Doo. Oh, that awesome. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dum, 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 dum. Would that make him a great actually though? dumb, though, was yes. he? I don't remember him being dumb. He was, a... he was just named that. No, yeah, he, he, he was cut. Scooby. Yeah, Scooby-Dumb. But yeah, just the whole human thing. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So Ichi had to explain to me. It's like, oh, yeah, this happened earlier. It I'm was like, from around the time when Psycho showed up. I'm like... Oh, you mean, like, episode 17, 18? 20 oh, yeah. fucking episodes ago? Yeah, that's why they have that fucking many of them, because they've been doing all this in the background the entire show. That's dumb. That's <laughs> really dumb. <laughs> right, I, I remember... See, we could have been focusing on all this crap instead of the time spent on Kenzon and Disaster. I remember when Nico tried to fucking fight Genmu with a fucking mop, and I was but, like, you like, dumb bitch. Yep. It's like... I forgot about the mop. You know, at least with freaking, at least with Kuga, like, you know, sort of like how Kuga, like, life form number zero, went around assassinating people all around the world and shit, or all around Japan. At least it was intended that, like, they're all doing this, but he's doing it on his own. And when he does show up, he's like, oh, yeah, I killed, like, a million people. It's like, oh. Oh, so you mean zero go. Yeah, zero go. Yongo is Kuga. But life form... Zero. I know, but you said Yongo said Yongo earlier. Yeah, Kuga was uh, number four. Number four. Zero go. All right. Uh, yeah, and Dagavazeva was his name. Yeah, but this it's just like, oh yeah, we've been capturing humans on the side. Why was this never addressed? It's like okay, they maybe did at one point they were talking about like oh all these missing people. Yeah, they did show like a montage of like Legil and Zeus going around just like scooping humans up. So yeah, but it's like that was like. Like you said, that was when Psycho appeared. That was like 20 or so episodes ago. You just can't bring back a I plot point. I sort of forgot about it, which was... I'm glad which, they didn't forget about it entirely, though, because that would have been a lot worse. I yeah. mean, this is better than just dropping the plot point entirely. Yeah, At least exactly. we're, we're still dealing with, like, oh, what were the, what have their motives been while the writers have been infighting all this time? But, but at least have After tease, the whole like, story, someone being like, wait, what about all those missing people? Or, hell, you could have had this entire town be like a like a character itself of like, 
oh, she's the flower shop girl. She, uh, he runs the mechanic shop. He does this. There's too many that. of them for it to be worth the time. But they're just people. Exactly. That's just who they are. Doesn't matter. It's just innocence. Like it just could have been like, oh, I haven't seen her around a bit, and it would have made this feel a bit more intimidating, like personal and intimidating. That like you kidnapped all these people. I'm like, well, I guess that explains why the entire town feels fucking dead. Sadly, there's that whole weird mental thing of people seeing nameless people as a statistic rather than people, which is really upsetting. Yeah. It's like, like we, Lynn and I both watch Ultraman, Ayaka City and Rube. That yep. was a character. Yep. Uh, Denko Chojin Gridman. That's, like, that entire community feels like an actual, like, town. It just, like, there are ways to work around this, and it's sort of like, it feels hollow because it's like, oh yeah, we've taken these people, why should we care? The other question is, from a narrative standpoint, if all these attacks were happening, why did no one ever know about it? Like, May's book should have told them about yeah, at least some of these. May sh and this is just poor execution of a show, like, not to mention, you have ten writers in this show. Like, ten, oh, I lost count of how many there are. Thirteen. There are thirteen writers in this show. You're telling me you can't just have them do, like... like that's something that, that's something they could have had Kenzan doing this whole time! Fighting to defend all these people! Yeah. That's a good point. Or hell. God damn it! Remember how there were mooks? <laughs> mooks in the early, early part of the show? Have them be the one kidnapping people, and Kenzan's being like, someone's gotta go do this. Sorry, like, sorry, Ken... Kenta, freaking, uh, yeah, Kenta's his name, right? No. Ren is his yeah, name. Yeah, Kenzan Ren. is the writer. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry, Ren, we're busy doing this north-south thing. Fine. If no one's gonna do it, he picks up a sword. I will. And he goes around saving the city. Exactly. That could even have led to a crisis of faith about, are the Sword of Logos worth staying with? Yeah. Why aren't they backing me up? I don't know. That's not what happened. Anyway, um... Here are some Twitter disaster photos. So they, <laughs> so they fight Charybdis a bunch, including one of the scenes being the castle from Exit Episode Two, where Brave debuted. Yeah. Oh, is that what his name is? What? I've just been calling him Kirby. Oh. Wow. Oh, Charybdis. Yeah. When you used to have creepy baby noises. Yeah. Now he's a man with a giant fucking mouth. Our animal wolf. So then eventually he like eats Storius and Storius kind of just like dissolves him. Yeah, so I guess Charybdis only existed to be a great big power m alchemy mixing pot. It's like a blender. So like he he, he has has himself get eaten by Charybdis along with the five books. Legil Zuos uh, his own Megiddo book. The the one uh, from Tassel, and Omniforce, left from Master Logos, and apparently blended all in Charybdis's body, he just, like, fade, like crumbles away, and now we see that it's all mixed together into the Grimoire Wonder Ride book that Storius is going to use to become a Kamen Rider for Storius, except that's not going to happen for several weeks, because they just leave it on a cliffhanger right oh. before he's about to hit it! Damn, Why? Damn you, Olympics. Damn got, you. Got, got tickled the balls. <laughs> ah! I don't I care. <laughs> they could have just let him do the head shit. I'd be satisfied. I'd be sated. I could wait. I'm kind of, I'm kind of just like where I am, the same where I was in zero one, where I'm just kind of like, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for the next rider. Bring on Revice. I want to see what he's about. Not, he's it's, it's, sort of it's funny that you sort say of that because even to this week. I have been watching the raw of every episode of Saber the day it airs since the show started. I have not done that with any other writer show I've ever watched. Mm. Oh, Our but, final, final thoughts on this show will be very interesting. But it's just, It'll be me crying a lot. Just yeah. a heads up. It's sort of just weird to think that... <laughs> it's sort of just weird to think that, like, okay, what's the next episode? The entire plot goes on pause so that we can do two crossover episodes with Zenkaidra. Oh, one more thing. So when Kenzan finishes off Disast, like as Disast is dying, his like dying request is make sure you eat the red ginger with your ramen. And Ren, the fucking empathic mastermind, fucking no. But but then he, he does anyway. He does anyway. He's like he's like, he's like it's salty. <laughs> 
And then we get like we get a nice shot of like him sitting like eating the ramen with the red ginger what pepper or whatever. I, I, that just made me laugh so fucking much. We're, we just got went through this heartfelt supposedly it was supposed to be this whole heartfelt emotional battle between Kenzon and Disaster, yeah, yeah. clashing of ideologies, the reason for one's existence, the the dramatic music playing, and then as Disaster lets himself be free and conveys his dying wish to Ren for his own sake to help improve his life and he Ren just, just turns no. he just turns around and goes fucking no that's just I mean <laughs> way to kill the scene that's what Ren is like unfortunately I think, I think I know a perfect way around The only way he could have made it worse is if he just replied, Fucking got ye! Or how about this? What if as disaster was dying, he just tells Ren, Live life to the fullest. No. And that, no, no. And he just nods, <laughs> like he, no, no, he just nods, Zass dies, and this episode also did what last episode did for a year after credit scene, but it's a fucking show, why is there an after credit scene? But like you see him eating the ramen with the red ginger. I think it should have been he opens up the ramen. He's about to eat it. Looks at the pack of red ginger. Opens up. Pours it in. Yeah. Think of it. Live life to the fullest. And then like he you never know if you're not gonna like it or not. Yeah. Might as well try. And, and then I he like and then he like fucking he has disaster's book and like like all three of us watching were just like, oh, it's like Edgy Knock. I'm like, oh yeah, but so, done worse. So now we all know that Ren's gonna go on some sort of fucking adventure to find a way to restore disaster back no. to life. Well, well we know Kirby ate a piece of him, so he's a part of that. So what if Oh yeah. So what if uh, all that I don't know. free and then that that's what recreates uh, no. Oh maybe. Well, the whole Edgy Knock did it better because they were such a good duo and stuff like that. Uh go and chase was a lot better. Yeah. Which is still unconfirmed if Mach has like a ghost. If they ever succeeded. No, the only instance we got was like a brief like chase possessed the, the human dude. Kano Koichi. Yeah, for like temporarily. I still say Kano should be chaser! Yes. But anyways, so they tried to like rekindle that kind of relationship again with these two but like we don't care you didn't do anything with them so why do we give a fuck about these two we don't exactly so you wasted two possibly really good characters so like and especially in the last like three episodes of the series yep. we shouldn't be focusing on two side characters we need to focus on toma rintaro kento also red's mom's probably wondering where he's been <laughs> Sora, she, she, dinner! She isn't dead. Maybe Sora? previous maybe previous Kenzon was his mom. So just Maybe Ren's dad's probably worrying where he is. <laughs> you know what? Like I usually am like kind of about like more riders and stuff like that, but I'm, I think I think for Revice I'm gonna go with like the like Gar usually says Less characters! Let's have a main focus of them. Like I'm just a couple of them. Go maybe go back to the, the two No, the two no, no. I will not go back to the two rider formula. That was a fucking curse. As good as some of those shows are, no. Okay, what was what would be your m minimum three. in a show now? Three. I would say three. three. No less than three. Okay, three. Three. I'm fine with. Maybe three, and then like the cool badass man we But like, stop with the evil final villain riders. That's been done to death now. I'm actually kind of sick and tired of that. That's stupid. I, I think that's a I think that's a hit and miss. It's not, there's not they're not all bad. I think it's just the problem of like it doesn't make them unique because they're just another common rider. Like hell, at, least, at least Cronus was interesting. Like Cronus was cool. No, Cronus had a great debut, but then his character powers. Cronus's powers are cool. But then Cronus's power, like then Cronus as a character, immediately just jumped a ship and became his son. Yeah, well, I wouldn't even say that. At least Dan Corona was Gold, entertaining. Gold Drive was such a fucking awesome final villain. Like I, I loved Gold well, Drive well, because it's like you know it was to mock Shinosuke of like oh look at me, <laughs> mock. Hey, look at me, I'm uh, become I'm the very thing that you are that the people but look shinier, at, but but evil. <laughs> but yeah, so just like. Like, we'll, we'll see what Revice is going to be. We have no idea what the fuck it's going to be like, but, like, just... We do know... Don't waste characters! You do know that 
we're probably going to have the first rider around for like the first two months before we get a secondary rider. Cool. Cool. Yeah, because... I mean, happens. what, we didn't get, like, cross until, like, what, like, 12 episodes in or something? I believe it was 10. Yeah. Yeah, like 10 episodes in, which is fine. Well, I'll send him to the belt more as a character. Yeah, don't, yeah. don't do, like, two Kaiser where fucking episode 7. Oh, look, there he is! <laughs> Got him! No, I said... As much as Zen Kaiser has impro- improved in big air quotes. It's funny as hell. <laughs> the closest thing to improve that I will say about Zen Kaiser is it's made me laugh more. It's been more comedic, but storyalized and still just eh. We're still grasping at the story, waiting for it to happen. Anyways, Ichi, I know you're really excited for like the finale of fucking Saber, but I really think it's gonna be like not good. I'm because you know, you know they're gonna end it like super, like really dumb, and then oh, five fucking B cinemas to actually complete the story. I'm expecting to be disappointed, but we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll get like a, you know, we're gonna get like a Blades movie, and you're gonna fucking yes. eat that shit up. So give it to me, give yeah. it to my that face. Was... No, like finish your main story in your show, and then can you know I branch say, off in the movies. I will say, as much as I enjoyed Exade and the movie trilogy that came after, having the plot be unresolved in the show is a fucking sin. Thank you. I've been saying that for years, but everyone's like, oh no, the X-Aid movies are pretty good. You should- Those are both true. I enjoyed the X-Aid movies, but you should- But I think the plot should have been resolved in the show. You shouldn't have to buy additional material just to see the end of the story. If anything, that's an insult for those who can't afford to, like, buy these movies. Yeah. Or stream these movies. It's an insult to them because you can never find out how it actually ends. It like the perfect example of how this is this is done like a multimedia frick storyline is done correctly. Things like dot hack. There's games. There's anime. There's movies. There's manga. But each one of them is a complete story. You don't need all of them to understand each of them. Because that's what Bionic did. Rompa did a pretty good job with that too, but there were a few things that were a little eh. Ah! Uh, Specifically with the anime, with Game 3 actually being the anime. Well, I'm not 100% sure about that yet. I'm still on my journey through Dangan Rompa. The first game was an excellent self contained story, and the second right. game did an amazing job of turning the story into an entire story. And I'm literally in two days, I'm starting Ultra Despair Girls, which is the story that's sort of between everything. And then the Danganronpa 3 anime that supposedly wraps up everything. And then there's the V3 game, which is apparently reboot from what I'm hearing, but I'm looking forward to going through all of it. It's weird, Um, but yeah. But yeah, so Saber, Sorry for the tangent. <sighs> Gotta step up. You got two episodes left. You better fucking wow us. You better. Is it only res- two episodes? Do we know that for sure? Like four. Like we know. Okay, here's what we know. We know we're going. Up, we're doing a crossover next week episode, and then after that, we're possibly going on a three week break. It's either one week or three week. I've heard both. It's one or the other. It is ending next month, and Revice is starting first week of September. Man. Wow. But yeah, it's so like, and you better fucking resolve everything, I swear to no, God. No, no, it's going to be swell up in the V-Cinemas because this guy also wrote Ghost, where it the story kept going. Even to this day, it's still going with the Saber crossovers, which I guess those are considered canon. Like, you shouldn't have done the Ghost. You shouldn't have done the Ghost crossovers <laughs> until after the series was done. It, Not bet- like, in between. Like, 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 like I've been complaining about. This guy literally bailed on his own show to write his own fanfic. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna write something about my old thing I used. To, I was a head writer for. It's Remember like, Ghost? Remember? You know that thing. It's that back I said in I'm sorry about. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the guy. Yeah, change the guy. <laughs> so apparently, the Tochi Tendo have a spa, and I kind of want to see it. <laughs> Uh, I'm guessing since it's since it's all robots, it's like the generic robot theme of like instead of a hot water salon or like hot water, it, yeah, it's oil. Probably. So I'm not. I'm not going to. But I kind of, kind of wish I could. I wish I would. 
I want to keep like uh, I would love to keep a counter of every single time we see Stacy just like <laughs> just pose <laughs> fucking drop pose it's into like every shot he comes combat in. roll on screen. Oh, it's great! Like he, like like last week we got like two weeks ago we got with the fucking wall like the fence the, the flip yeah, that yeah, was so a, good. Yeah. So but yeah, like Adrian Adrian or whatever leaves and then you just see him just. <laughs> Like fucking Black Widow into the fucking shot. And I was like, like I just wanted to crazy. dub the Pink Panther theme over it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. I'm expecting Deadpool to be like, oh, wait for it, wait for it, superhero landing. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Superhero landing! Yeah, that's really hard on the knees. Really hard on the knees. Uh, but yeah, so this episode's about bugs. But specifically, rhinoceros beetles. Kabuto Mushi. Which, what are the odds? The monster that they're fighting this, this week is a bug theme. The next episode is the Kamen Rider team up. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. I really want someone to do that. On purpose, but... but now I'm thinking you could have just like held off on the beetle for next week's episode. That way it could have been like, you know, the riders fighting the beetle monster. Speaking of beetles... by the Toji Tendo's beam, they all turn into looking like like bug type Pokemon trainers. Spe- yeah, and speaking of beetles, let's let's quickly uh, pay attention to the best moment in the episode where they actually reenact the Beatles moment. Yeah, like that album cover where they're like crossing that famous like crosswalk or whatever oh like that. God, yes. I can't <laughs> believe they fucking did that. That's, that's that's for the fucking like grandparents and parents in the room watching Zenkaiger with their kids. They're like, honey, did you see that? Honey, get me in there. This is the thing. <laughs> Oh, Beatles! <laughs> Abbey Road. Yeah, that's it. Abbey Road. Abbey Road. Yeah, Abbey. Mm. And also, I I was paying attention, so they made a big deal about how they were all Kabuto Mushi. I absolutely saw Kuwagata in there somewhere. Yeah. Oh, don't you mean a prime answer? For the bug <laughs> nerds to see it and then get angry. <laughs> yeah. The, the Power Ranger audiences, that, 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 that's a mantis. But yeah, so the couple to me. Who would know that more than the little kids watching the show who know everything about Beatles? The Kabuto Mushi world hits people with its beam and they transform into bug catchers and start running around thinking they're catching bugs, but they're not. They're just handling trash. They're catching trash. I just love how prevalent bug catching and specifically beetle catching and raising is in Japanese media. I wish that was a thing here because they're so cute and they sell like jelly to feed them and habitats to keep them in. (laughs) I've even seen some like I've even seen some like bug catching and raising mechanics as like side mini games in some RPGs. But like and then like only exists because that was what led to that world being well yeah, I, well, yeah I the, bug, the pokemon. bug pokemon catching contest in fucking silver and gold was like the fucking hypest shit ever oh, I remember. you want you wanted to catch that scyther you wanted to catch that fucking pincer you wanted to get the best fucking thing possible um but yeah then like zok shows up because he fucking like rider kicks the world that was actually head. amazing so cool like zok zok has his moments where he can pull off being like really fucking cool and then he just decides to be an absolute dickbag and use the others as fucking shields. Yeah, human shields, because apparently, like, if the beam already hits you once, doesn't affect you again, so... Which, I mean, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he just, like, blocks them and stuff, and then, like, later on, we see, like, him up, up in the ship with Flint or whatever like that, and, like, he's eating, like, pancakes. <laughs> the fucking tiny robot boys are eating yeah, pancakes like, somehow! Their little bites like and a, pancake on them. That was, was like just a, really just too much. It's cute. <clears throat> I mean, I guess they have to eat too, so... Do they? They're toys! I mean, they kind of have to eat, poop? so... <laughs> it's like how... Do they poop? Oh, God. Does his ass poop? <sighs> is that what the title of Disaster's book is? Does... Do, <laughs> Everybody poops. Yeah, but it's just no. Poops. No. <laughs> disaster. Is this a is this a pimple or a boil? <laughs> Cut to the wound that he's struggling to close. Mom, I need more OJ. Let's get trouble morphine. I'm a sheriff Lobo. <laughs> yeah, just. Just they're eating pancakes. It's like and like they're having like a contest, like who can eat the faster. And then like you hear like Ricky, like Cudner being like, "That's cheating! Get you that!" <laughs> I'm just picturing Ricky from Trailer Park Boys voicing Ricky. Oh, no, oh, God, <laughs> no! Fuck off, Zekajers! <laughs> Zox, what? The, uh, like he just mispronounces words. Come on, Zox, put me in the gear to. Pancakes! Flint, pancakes, gears, let's go! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flint, just, just socks with a whiskey. They can use 
pure Canadian maple syrup too. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. So they they they're they, tried, like, they try and smuggle syrup in their zords. Yeah, so like they're they're eating pancakes so they have like maple syrup or whatever like that. And so then like they get the uh, the, the idea to like they they use the, the Ob Ranger Sentai gear to summon like Abrai Killer's weapon, which didn't realize is a fucking quill. Yeah, because when he first debuted, he kicked their asses and they're like, who are you? He literally spells his name up in the air, faces it towards him and be like, fuck you guys, that's who I am. Wow. Wow, all right. What a badass. That's, that's how much of an asshole he was. He literally writes in the air who he is. I'm that guy. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, so he like yeah. draws like a giant fucking jar of maple syrup, a of syrup on a building and then like smashes the bottle so like the... the Cause like beetles and bugs they are like trying to sap. syrup all over the side of a very tall building. Yeah, and it actually works. Cause like <laughs> bugs are attracted to sap. So, oh my god. Like, I, I gotta say, Zuck's pretty smart sometimes. Across. It's like that. Oh yeah. 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 Oh my god. <laughs> he hand wrote it. <laughs> I never thought I'd see a ranger whose weapon was a fucking quill. Well, you know what they say, the pen is mightier than the sword. It's really like you wrote it in English. Yeah, yeah. In cursive. In cursive. cursive That's in English. fucking amazing. What a baller. I fucking hate cursive. And you want to know the best part about him? His first debut episode? Fuck it. It's not set in the present. It's basically where the hell has this guy been the entire show up to this point? Cool. Wow. So the entire episode is just an origin. His backstory? Yeah. Auto Ranger sounds... <laughs> honestly, Auto Ranger sounds really good. Auto Ranger is good, but I wouldn't recommend watching Hurry Kenter and then straight into Auto Ranger, because I really loved Hurry Kenter. Mm. And then Auto Ranger felt a little amp, but I've really grown to really appreciate it more. I love that Bar Shitara tried to stop two guys' just fucking form change dance. No, 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 no dancing. He like, also he, loose in here. He's like, yeah, he also like he has some history with socks. And it's like, oh, wait, I haven't seen you in a while. He's like, yeah, I just like, fucking raid your base, bitch. And he's like, Ugh. my favorite moment in the whole episode is when Kaito, like he, like after he snaps out of the delusion, he just realizes, oh shit, I need to fight. He just comes barreling out of nowhere and just fucking drop kicks the world enemy in the fucking face. Oh, so good. But even he felt like the repercussions. Yeah, he's like on the ground like, ah, fuck! I I think that's what made the scene. Like, you (laughs) see, like, he doesn't strike the landing. No, he ends up on the ground like, like, he's holding his, like, his hip because he landed on it. on the ground. Got him! He's like, I, like, I, I gotta give it to Kaido, man. Like, he's got fucking balls. Like, also, his new vest looks nice. Yes, yes, he's got his summer outfit on. So it's so cool. vest. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so the rest of the Zenkaijus are fucking like, in Lala, indisposed man. because, yeah, they're like, Gowan has. We're like, helping! So, Time like, for Kikai Noids. Time for Kikai Noids. No. <laughs> I'm just gonna go on this chair. Yes. Yeah. No, wow. Teletubbies. Um. Anyways. Just right around the middle. Uh. Also, also Stacy, like, because uh, he recognized Kaito's parents. He's like, hmm. So we get a little cute scene where he's trying to figure out like a like a key, like oh. a keyword to like yeah, so to like cool. unlock them. Okay. So like before we get into that. Spider-Man, like in the first Spider-Man movie where he's trying to shoot web. Before, before we get into what Stacy does. What the fuck is this that we're looking at with Kaito's parents? Are those like their minds, or is this like clones of them? We have no I idea what they are. I thought they were just frozen. No Cryogenically frozen inside the. Tokyo. But then why are they holograms? Because it's probably just their it's, like, it's like a it's like a live feed of them or something. Maybe, but yeah. they didn't explain anything. It's, but yeah, it's, it's called foreshadowing. Ma- yes. Decker suggests maybe they're AI copies of them. Oh, maybe. Uh, but yeah, so Stacy. There's a gif. So like, oh my god. So Stacy, like, he's trying to figure out like a keyword, like something that would kind of like, you know, make them wake up. Jostle so like, yeah. Them. So he like does like a bunch of Kaito stuff, and then he just like thinks about like Zen Kaiser's like roll call pose. So he does the whole thing. It. He performs yeah. the whole thing, and it's adorable too because like we did find out that he auditioned for Zen Kaiser, didn't get the role. But they made wrote Stacy for him because they liked him so much. So it was actually kind of cute to see, like, oh, here's what he'd be like if he was Zenkaiser. So it was it's like, oh. so funny that the best character in the show was one who was written after the fact. Yeah, they're just like, yeah, we like you. Put make a character. So it was really cool. Uh, eventually, he does like. 
I think he kind of yeah he wakes them up, but, but then he, like he, also wakes up Setchan or something. Well, what he does wake them up, but he walked away before seeing that, so he didn't notice that they were woken up. And then like and Setchan's like sends a whole bunch of files to Setchan for the new power up. So yeah, they, which he like yeah, goes, maybe they were AI. Yeah, so like Setchan like goes and like wakes up. He's like oh my god, I gotta go to the keyboard. And he's like. I, ah! He's like, I just love that. Like, the floor drops from under him and he just falls into the and pit. And he just starts, like, pecking on the fucking keyboard, like, yep. super fast. And then he uh, he thinks of, like, a design, so then he uh, goes to Flint, but Flint, like, is trying to, like, like, what the fuck's going on and stuff. And he's like, I need a favor from you! And she's like, okay. And yeah, together they invent the Zenkaiju gear. That I like more than Flint just showing up and be like, oh, look, I made Sentai gears. How? Yeah, right? At least here it's like, you know, She's working with Shen Chen, who has all the information. Yep. And, and materials. And material. But here, it's like, just, here's the thing. Okay. So they invent the Zenkaiju gear, a.k.a. the Fang memory. Yeah, it's which... basically Fang memory. So, like, and it's, and it's like little, like, kaiju mode. It looks like the quantum, the quantum racks. Which I, I may have to get it. Because it says kaiju. Kaiju. Yeah. Kaiju. And then when you when you flip it over into like where you actually put it into the changer, it looks like Dragon Caesar's head. So. Yeah. The Which, little that, mouth on it is so cute. Yeah, I feel like that's an Ob Ranger reference. It's. I discussed this when we talked about the toy. It's a reference to all four Sentai with dinosaurs and the Gearx. Hey, how's there a reference to Reef Soldier? Because when you flip it around, it's just like the Reef Soul changer. Oh. Uh, Ah. Um, and then, ah, and, beca oh, and, beca Zen and with that, we get the debut of Super Zen Kaiser, and whoa, it's so fucking cool. Which it's such a nice suit. Won't lie, it looks better in motion. Yeah. I'm still kind of on the fence about it. I think the weapon's cool, but I just don't like that, oh, now he's just a big, bulky robot thing like the rest I mean, of them. You know, you know me, I like my bulkiness, so. I will say... The theme song that played during this oh, debut is insert song. So fucking good. And then he just does this awesome he sots where he like fires a blast but like fires the fucking spear and it just impales and drills into the fucking oh, yeah, because beetle world. I also like the drill that the drill like shot out like a chain. That was cool. Yeah, because of uh, I can't remember its Japanese name, but Dragon Caesar. Well, I know it that name, but I don't remember the combination when it combined with Daijujin. Oh, I don't know. I think it was like the Dragon Zord in fighting mode. Yeah, Dragon Zord battle mode. Let's just call it that. How its final attack is how it impaled the staff into the opponent, and that left a gaping hole, and it exploded. Cool. I feel like this is a good rendition of that, where he like I have a gun, so I'm gonna shoot, but the bullet, like the energy bullet, is going to be the spear. Yeah. But yeah, uh, but it, it's just such such a cool suit. I love it because like honestly, Dragon Zord is like one of the coolest fucking swords ever. So he's Mecha Godzilla. He is Mecha Godzilla. He appears to be a Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> and then something else super interesting happens when Kabutomushi Die World shows up. He turns the whole city into a jungle. Like it was, it was actually really cool. Like they basically filmed this fight in a forest and just had a bunch of city models, like yeah. building models around them. That was really clever. Yeah, I don't think we've seen anything like that before. I think the last thing... Tokyo did a house. Like, they fought inside a house. Yeah, that's right. And I think before that, it was like, Magi Ranger fought in a cave. Yes. But this is, like, probably the most recent where they've been... Done something creative with the Zord fight setting. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I like ideas like that. You know what I also liked in this? Uh, it was only in this in this episode. I'm not sure if we'll keep doing it or not. But when the four Kikinoids were talking, the screen split, and you saw them like actually interacting, like what they were saying. Cool. Yeah. And I think that's a better way to represent them because you know they're not in the cockpit. They are the Zords. It makes them feel more like more human in a sense. Yeah. Sort of like how a new gen Ultraman, you see the host inside the Ultra Suit. Oh yeah. Um, and they're like, hey, where's Kaito? Oh, there he is. Why are you big? Is he thicker? Oh. Damn! <laughs> Damn! He's thick! 
Yeah, it's just Gawa. Ooh, he back! <laughs> um... Kaito enters the bar. Dang! He's... And then they, they thank Kaito, or Sox and Flint with, like, a meal, and, like, Flint's like, I made another one! Yeah, yeah. Flint just pulls it out, oh, look, it's a pirated copy! Ha <laughs> ha Here you go, bro. Yeah, so we're gonna see Super Two Kaiser next week, which is also the crossover, which means the crossover is canon. Which, which is just with Durandal and Savala, and then they wear dresses. Apparently, oh, just, oh, why is he in a dress? I, I, I don't want to know. No, I'm more annoyed by the fact of that you literally have so many writers to choose from. I think Buster and Slash would have been good. Hey, I know. Let's get the characters where their DX toys are premium Bandai and aren't even out yet. And aren't even out yet. Not the characters where we'll have to sell their... Pro- like, from what I understand, Saber's been doing poorly with toy sales. Mm. Imagine this. If you got Buster and Slash in there, you are also promoting the Buster and Slash sword. You'll probably get these things off the fucking shelves. <laughs> Otherwise, Revice's budget is going to be nothing. Yeah, because you know it all depends on how well the other toy line did. So it's like, uh, here you go. Hmm. But I guess that may not affect Revice since it is the 50th anniversary, so they may go all out with the with the budget. I'm not sure. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff, honestly. So. But I'm just more annoyed that, like, hey, let's give them Ryoga the most non. Like, he has no character. Why? Why have him team up with the Zenkaijers? How about I will I will prefer Buster. Yeah. Let's, it. let's put it this way. We're giving him a chance to develop some character. I mean, he's standing there in a fucking dress. The man's in a dress for coming up <laughs> God. All right. Uh, feature topic time. Woo! Oh, we're opening our eyes. I have been super excited to get to this topic. This is one of my favorite writer shows. Story time. <laughs> So Ryuki did Gangbusters. Does, does that mean good? I don't know. Yes, ga- Gangbusters is like it blew up. Okay. It blew up in views in yeah, it's it blew up in viewership. It blew up in toy sales, where it surpassed Curry Kenger. Of course, it blew up in toy sales. There's fucking thirteen writers. Hmm. So basically, to- uh, Ishinomori Productions were sort of like, hey, we sort of want to do a ki- like a Kikaider reboot after Ryuki. You know, it's sort of just to keep the waters changing. But since, because, of, like, bleh, bleh, but because of Ryuki's high popularity. But then, bleh. Uh, yeah, because of Ryuki's high popularity, they sort of went, like, well, I guess we're going to do another writer show. But how do we top something that, you know, it had 13 writers, it had character development, it had character issues of, like, you know, even the villain can be a writer. How do we top that? The idealism of the hero, the villain is the hero of their own journey. Yes. So that's what Fies is heavily about. It's about showcasing that the villains aren't just the angry monsters. Yeah, this is one of the first shows where the monster of the week were actually original, originally humans that became monsters. By accident. Because it's not something that they can just trigger, it's no, you... So basically, we have the Orphanon. I mean, aside from, obviously, the original Ichigo, where all the monsters were just mutated people. Yeah, but they chose that. Yeah. You know, unlike here with the Orphanok, you have to die. Yeah, so the idea was that the Orphanox were supposedly touted as the next evolution of humanity, but only a chosen few could ascend to their ranks. Gee, I wonder what big movie franchise was popular at the time. Definitely not the movie that had a bunch of men with this sort of X gene in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Y men. I got new mutants. X X sword men? Oh, oh wait, no, I'm sorry, Daredevil. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, love that movie. Watch the director's cut, not the original. No, no, of course I'm talking about the X Men. Yeah. Uh, actually, this is actually a very interesting one because it was the first writer series that I actually fully completed. Because, like, I, my first one was Kabuto, but I only had 23 episodes at the time. But Fies, uh, my friend, our uh, Greencaster, he uh, gave me the entire series of Fies, and I watched it all. It's a w- weird memory I have with it. 
ate peanuts a lot when I watched Fives. <laughs> So I bought some peanuts, and then every time I watched Fives, I wanted peanuts. I ate peanuts when I watched Fives. Open your gut with these nuts. No, that's just that's just like that's, just, that's, just, that's, just, that's honestly that's honestly just all an autistic thing I have. Like I eat, I need to eat a certain food with a certain things I watch. Did you not hear what I said? Yeah, I heard. Oh, I chose to ignore it. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, so Fives Fives has I I, I like Fives. I thought it was a really cool show. Fives is one of the shows that are much heavier on the narrative rather than the gimmicks. I mean, that's how that's, it was all Ryder back then. Yeah. I'll say about this. Out of all the shows that that, act, that, that producer worked on, because, you know, he, he did Akito, he did Fives, I believe he did Kila. You, you know the guy that I'm talking about, the one that had the entire article showcasing all the similarities with yeah. the show. I feel like Fives is probably his best one. Yeah, and yeah, uh, CO2 is mentioning the Hyper Battle DVD. That was actually the first Fives thing I saw, too. And anyone who who likes Toku in any capacity needs to watch it, even if you haven't watched Fives, because this is fucking hilarious. He's only seen the Hyper Battle video because I showed it to him, like, three weeks ago. For those who don't know, the Fives Hyper Battle video is a fucking musical. It's an opera. It's an opera, a musical. It's got parodies of West Side Story, Mary Had a Little Lamb. What? And a bunch of others. Yeah. Emily, it's, if you look it up on YouTube, it is there, fully English subbed. It's funny as It is such a trip, and that's what convinced me to watch the show. Yeah. And it's so different yeah, from like the they're, actual show. They're like, they're like describing, they're like describing like the, the, the writers of the show, and it's like, Come in, ride up, it's a fucking opera. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It, it was it's pretty eye-opening. Crazy, but also amazing. Henshin Kodo Go Go Go! <laughs> it's legit an opera. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but All the right. first two episodes of Fies... Much different. They're, they're not about Fies. They're about Kiva. Yeah. This is, this is one of my favorite shows for the reason that... The side characters like Kiba and, and Yuka and Kaido are literally just as important as the writers themselves in the narrative. Because that, Arguably more. Because that's what they were going for. But they're not just monsters. They were people. Monsters can be people too. Like, oh, look at Kiba. Had a girlfriend. Had a, he, he had a car. Life was going <laughs> he, well. Until, he had a car. Until some asshole who was... To a generic Japanese truck that fucking is responsible for every fucking the accident. car accident and anything. The accident truck. Isn't Which it I... the one that they all call truck kun? <laughs> is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, it is. Usually when oh, they oh, do oh. um, Sekai anime where people die in trucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the recent one I always know is like that girl like running out and she's like in the first episode of her show or whatever like that, she runs out and immediately gets fucking run over by a truck. Wow. Yeah. In which I, I, I'm sorry, but I gotta make the Digimon reference. Well, did you see that? No, I was sleeping. But you're driving. <laughs> That's pretty much what happened. But yeah, so like Kiba, he, he's 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 a good boy. He you know yeah, yeah like I say, he has a girlfriend. He's got a car, and they're driving. They're all nice and stuff like that. Get by a truck. Coma for two years. Then I noticed that the skidding sound effects that they used were the same skidding sound effects that are used in Disney's Alice in Wonderland. Weirdly specific. I don't know why, but like my brain instantly recognized it. Like when <laughs> the card is skidding along the ground trying to become the hoop in time during the croquet game, it's the exact same skidding sound. Wow. <laughs> Which I will admit, the only thing that would have made this ten times worse is if the truck just kept driving. Oh god, so what was it? Yeah. No, 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 he, no, no he sorry, stayed. Just, he accidentally hit him. Fuck it, I ain't getting suit. Oh shit, and, fuck. Yeah, like I ain't getting suit and just keeps driving. Yeah, that's how worse this could have been. Oh no, it's 2003. We don't have reliable cell phone cameras to capture his license plate. Well, actually, this was two years ago, so 2001. Oh yeah, it's two years beforehand. Yeah, it's two years later, so it's not 2003. Kiba Kiba died, which it's okay. He got better. Actually, this makes <laughs> did he? This makes me question a lot. So basically, Kiba's parents are dead. They die in the crash. But he goes into a coma for two years. Not that. Who the hell was paying his medical bills? His parents are dead, then who's keeping him alive? Maybe his uncle? I guess, because when he goes back to his place, finds out, oh yeah, your dad's business went, oh, maybe it was his dad's business insurance probably kept him. 
maybe. Yeah, so, like, his, his, like, the house got taken because, like, his dad's company went under, and then, like, uh, they had Ex massive debt. Except we find out, nope, his uncle's just a corrupt, crooked asshole, and he did it himself. Yeah. And uh, his girlfriend, well, it's been two years, she moved on. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 they frame it like she's a terrible person for moving on, but really think about that. Two years? Yeah. That's a lot. When they've only been together for one year? And, uh, that's... and when you find out that, like, you died. Yeah, too. they thought he died! Yeah, so... <laughs> you, you moved on? Kiba, it was till death do us part. So <laughs> he's just... married. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he... The, now. <laughs> the, man, the man's just wandering, wandering around the rain, trying to figure out, like, what do I do with myself? Yeah, like, and then like, he just... Even, even, even though we just excused "Quote unquote," Chie's decision to move on. I still feel fucking awful for Kiva in this show yeah. because he's, through no fault of his own, he lost two years of his life and now walk is walking around completely alone in the world. His parents are dead. His girlfriend's moved on. His uncle has ruined his life and finances and his and his family's legacy. There goes his credit. And yeah, and he's just wandering around in the world with no one and nothing. It's Sorry, fucking Mr. awful. So anyways, he turns into this giant horse demon. Yeah. So in which horse orphanage. Yeah, yeah. When he died, Horfinok. Uh, it was revealed that like you know you know okay time of death, he came back because he is one of the selected few that could become an orphanok. Because that's the thing about this show, you not everyone dies and comes back as an orphanok. It is a select few. Thus, that's why they feel that they are the next evolution in humanity. Yeah, and it, yeah. it's it's fucked up too. Like the 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 humans that get like killed by other orphanages, which is like it's pretty fucked up. Like the, some of, some of them put like these like vein things like through down into like where their heart is, and then you just see like an X ray zoom in of their heart, and it just gets fucking dissolved, and then they just like they die, come back as like temporary zombies, and then just turn to fucking dust, and just it's they're gone. Pretty Terrifying. It's, it's fucked up. It's and then, really and up. then you have Kiva. He doesn't use his fucking tentacles or anything. He just stabs your heart and it turns to dust. Stabs it with his penis-shaped sword. <laughs> Looks like a penis. I'm sorry. I got a sword. I'm gonna stab it. You stab it. Yeah. So like we. <laughs> so far, better saber rider than saber. So like we see him like do it on like the dude like <laughs> just just like Kiva as he stab like this is going ahead a little bit but just like Kiva as he stabs Chie. This is more satisfying than our when we actually had sex. <laughs> no, but it, it's pretty like like I was watching Ichi with like so like they like he confronts the boyfriend or whatever like that turns the horse off like, stabs the guy in the heart and I see Ichi go like Ugh. and then they like go to episode go to episode two and they recap and they show him fucking stab again you're still yep. like Ugh. yeah it, it's it's unnerving it's disturbing shit but, but, I'm sorry can we talk about probably the best scene after that. Kiba's on a rooftop. Oh. Oh my god. Contemplating on what has just happened to his life. And what does he decide to do? Hi, I'm Kiva. You may be wondering how I got here. Fuck, I'm wondering how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he, he basically decides that killing himself is the only thing he has left to do. So he literally jumps off a building. Like, it cuts to, like, a... Like Lands a in a crowded area. Yeah. It's like, it's in a... Like, you see, like, cut this this pigeon and then you just see like a crowd of people just walking down the street you just watch the mannequin drop <laughs> yeah, it, it, very it quick at least a good mannequin and not like a shitty cheap disney mannequin. like not the danny sex bang mannequin and then he, yeah where it's like the limbs are just no that thing has weight and structure to it as if it was <laughs> just an actual just wait so, so right, then like this is leather right yeah so then, like, he wakes up, and he's in this fancy apartment, and we find out that... That's his house for the rest of the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's been picked up by the mascot of Smart Brain, a company that... their tech company. Their front-facing business is Home Electronics, as you see over the course of the show. And, it's all, and the funny thing is, their electronics are the basis for the equipment used in the show. The Fi's pointer is a flashlight. The Fi's shot is a camera. The Fi's Edge is a bike handle. No, and yeah, so, and the, the commercials are the fucking best because they're narrated by, like, the voice of the belt. Why don't you think about true life? Be wonder, smart. True life is your start. I wonder how much money that guy made from doing Fi's. It's such a so weirdly soothing voice. Yeah, especially when you hear him go, like, standing by. Because I was, I was looking it up while we were watching the show. 
Fly, like the Fly's belt itself made over, sold over a million units. It's, it's a, a really it's, good it's belt. It's a fucking rad ass belt. So how much money do you think he got paid? Also, that voice. Also, the first belt to have driver in the name. That is true. Technically, that was just the name of the phone itself, or no, just the belt. So what is it like? The Kuga had the Larkle, Arkle. Uh, Agito was the Ultra Ring. The Ultra Ring. And Ryu, Ruki was the V Buckle. Yeah. And, and this is yeah, this is the first to be the Fi's driver. Yeah. I thought it was always called like the Fi's gear. I think. Well, the, well, I think that's just the collection. The gear is the name of the whole set. Mm. The driver is the belt, and yeah. the phone is the Fi's phone. But yeah, like, and it's cool too, like, cause like it's in like a fancy smart brain suitcase, and you know, it's like it has like those like imprints that were like you can like fit all the equipment in. You take it out, but, you plug all the the, the equipment this, in, then you put on the belt. This leads to what is kind of one of the drawbacks of the show. The, sh- the series being based entirely around technology, every time someone henshins, or at least in the early show part of the show, they have to op- open the case, take out the belt, put on the belt, take out the phone, beep, 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 standing by, then henshin. <laughs> and that doesn't count the time to take out the weapons and equip those. Now, we also don't... It's like, a process. Yeah, we don't see it in the, these two first two episodes, but uh, Fiza's bike, uh, the auto vagine, which... Oh, yeah, I guess that's a that's a pretty 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 weird name to say without like snickering the first time you hear it. Yeah. Uh, but oh, I get it. Yeah, because the auto vagine, <laughs> auto vagine, get into the action. <laughs> um, but anyways, it's it's cool. It's a bike that turns into a fight a fucking robot. And yeah, he has like he turns Red one of his fuck. wheels into like a fucking like mach- mini gun. And yeah. it's, oh, it's it's super cool. It's probably one of the coolest bikes ever. Oh yeah, that's uh, that, that's the big thing we haven't addressed yet. Kiba's not Fies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. He's not the main character. Yeah, yeah, he's not the main character, even though we just spent, like, 20 minutes or, like, 15, 10, 15 minutes talking about him. Yeah. So, we briefly get introduced in the first episode, but our main character is Inui Takumi. Which, at the time of when the show started, he was the youngest common Rider at 19 years old. I just didn't like that he had the same haircut as Shinji. No! That was, like... From from Agito to fucking Blade, they was just like the protagonist has the to have long haircut. reddish hair. Yeah, so weird. So that's why like you get you get those four protagonists. Blade kind of too. Yeah, no, they all of them did it. And then he was like, "No, it's getting old." No, I'm like a mid early thirties fucking badass. All right, trains sorry, Emily, what were you saying? No, I wasn't saying anything. Well, you started to say something. All right. Um, so yes, uh, the other half of the story is, uh, Sonoda Mari, who was sent the Fies driver from her father, who's a character we meet later, uh, is basically biking through Kyushu, trying to, I don't know, get to Tokyo, uh, and along the way she runs into Takumi in the diner, and they, literally across these two episodes, mix up their bags fucking four times! They have the same brand of bag. Like, three or four times, because they have the same bag, but their contents are very different. One of them has... Takumi's bag has fucking clothes and underwear in it. And a gun. And and Mari is carrying around the fucking Fies driver in a thick-ass suitcase. Huh. You would think you'd notice the difference in weight between them. Yeah, like, my bag is suddenly super heavy. Okay, well now, now what we need to do is we need to get us do a study, like do some research here. So we need to buy a CSM Fies gear, get the same case, get a pile of clothes, weight both bags, and see if they actually are of equal weight. And, and we have no, that's to, too much. That's too I'm much. I'm gonna say we can infer that they're idiots. Uh, but the the best thing was. Like, Takumi gets, like, the, the Fies gear bag stolen, and then they, like, walk by, like, a pawn shop, and they just see the Fies belt on sale for, like, 5,000 yen, and I was just like, that was the Someone best. Someone pawned the driver. Someone pawned the fucking no, belt. It's not even that. It's just, man, if any common Rider weeb saw that, like, a, a Fies driver for 50 bucks, I think anyone would be like, yeah. I want it. <laughs> oh, I'd be down for that. My favorite part of that scenario was that was yeah. literally seconds after getting it back from... it. Like, it was his bag was stolen. 
He gets it back from the police station, swaps it up with Mari's bag again, and seconds later, it's stolen again. Well, yeah, because like, he shop. throws like her bag or whatever like that over, so she he like has, yeets so she has to like, like run over and catch it. But then he like feels bad that he did that, so he goes over to help her find it, and then she's like, "What the fuck is this?" And he's like, "It's like my clothes." It's Ashima Pansu. He's O's. Which honestly, I love their character dynamic. In oh this. yeah, they have yeah. A, such an because interesting not relationship with each other. It's just sort of like hey wait a minute where are you going i'm leaving yeah but you just bought that thing don't care <laughs> i'm not are, are, you, are you not questioning the fact that you just transformed into a spandex armored superhero wait, which, no and beat the I shit out of something that just you. turned into yeah. a monster <laughs> it seems to happen every year go, well, can we can we say the fight the five suit is fucking phenomenal oh, I, gorgeous. it is one of very few primary rider base suits uh, that I do no, love. I've always been drawn to the eyes of the fucking five suit. The fact that it glows and shit is so yeah, rad. Yeah, it glows in the fucking dark. Uh, it illuminates. It's, it's awesome. It's S tier for me. Up there with Kuga Mighty, freaking Comrade J. No, it still doesn't beat Drive type suit. Drive's the best She's fucking all suit, but best suits. But yeah, no, it's it's super cool. And like, and like the situation Mari gets in earlier too was funny because like she, I guess like found this guy stranded like uh with his bike broken so she helped him fix his bike and that proceeded to now him stalking and her, her and like him and his friends to start driving around with her hey babe around. come with us oh we're you going to tokyo we'll, we'll take you there we'll come with you come on beep, beep, beep. come on yeah beep, beep, beep. So then remember? that guy that guy gets attacked by a fucking orphanoc and then he comes back with like his bike helmet like like he's a zombie at this point he managed to ride his bike back to where they were. He starts like going towards Mari, and, and, like, yeah. and, and then takes off his helmet, and then he just dissolves into fucking. No, ash. I love that scene because you watch the fucking as he's dissolving into sand. You watch it spilling out of the visor of his helmet. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, we find out like Takumi's like he has cat tongue, so he's very sensitive to hot. Stop. He doesn't like hot coffee or whatever the fuck. Or hot soup. Or yeah. Or according to the, the official translations, he just doesn't like to get his tongue burnt. No, I mean, that's I, valid. I, I mean, I don't. I, I'm usually not big on, like, hot drinks and stuff. Yeah. yeah, but at least in the fan stuff, they acknowledge that it's an actual thing. They, 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 they recognize that it is an actual phrase. It's a term. Nekojita, which means tongue like cat tongue and well the also cool thing about the orphanoc as well is they have this cool ability where they can like project their like human selves onto like a wall yeah like their shadow lights up with their human bodies but why are they naked because because that's they're yeah. not they're not wearing any clothes on their orphanoc bodies i mean so women must have been heavily censored yeah i think or they only showed them like from like from yeah, yeah, like yeah. the neck up or whatever yeah. um but well, yeah and then they also they also have like a, a animal form as well yeah. yeah. So the first Orphanoc attack happens, and Mari pulls out the Fi's belt and tries to transform, but she can't. Now, simple brain tokusatsu viewers like to assume that this is just because she's a girl. No. But I will not spoil something, but I will tell you that there is a reason Mari is not able to transform, which is something you find out later in the show. Yes, yeah, so watch the show related, if you want to find out. It's not related to her gender at all. It's not at all. No. Know, no. Her reason. Yeah. You know, I'm like some... I mean, we had a pre-cure character who basically the only reason they couldn't become a pre-cure was because they were male, so... That was not fair. Look at shows like Nanoha. There are magical girls all over that show, and then in Striker S, there's a magical boy. You know, you know, unlike some California, you know, show factory employee who makes somewhat shitty tokusatsu videos online, <laughs> yes. who who literally addressed to his lovely few hundred people announcements. Oh, <laughs> she couldn't transform because she's a girl. No, it's like. Did you not even <clears throat> fucking watch the show? My thing about Fies you have to know is a lot of these belts get fucking swiped by other people. You know that is another thing yeah. that I really, really loved about this show. This was the first show where power sets got passed around. And that was awesome because you never knew who was going to transform next. There were times which leads me to one of my other points. Yeah, uh, which leads me to my, one of my other points. Of the whole like oh girls can't be riders. There is a girl who becomes one of the riders later in the show. Yeah, temporarily, but it happens. So 
but it's no. So get fucked. There's a legit good, valid reason why did she couldn't transform. So. And it makes perfect sense in the narrative. It's it not just all written in for because. <clears throat> yeah. It's baked deeply into the narrative of the show, and it is an amazing plot, and I enjoyed it, and this is another... This is one of very few writer shows that I would absolutely rewatch in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so in the second episode, when, like, they get attacked by, like, an elephant or a whatever like that, you get to see the debut of uh, Fize's rider kick. The I Crimson just, Smash. I just found that something. Hmm? Kibo was 24 when he did the show. Damn! Mm. He's an older gentleman. So, to, to think, Takumi's 19. He was older than the main title rider. I thought they were, like, the same age. Wow. Yeah, could have fooled me. But, yeah, so the Crimson Smash is really fucking cool, because, like, I'll let each just discover because it's, like, one of his favorite rider kicks. It is. So, the Fize Pointer, the thing that looks like a flashlight, gets attached to his foot, and he uses the mission memory in it, and then activates the Hisatsu on the belt. Ready. And then, the belt, the, the Pointer projects a light drill onto its target, basically locking them into place. And this addresses one of my biggest problems with Ryder Hisatsu. It's like, oh, why do they just let them hit them all the time? This addresses that, because if they get hit with the fucking setup, they are stuck there. And this is something that happens with all the Ryder power sets. Like, whenever Kaiza does his fucking blade gun dash, you see them get, like, trapped in this, like, yellow energy grid which holds them in place so yeah they get this laser energy drill locked onto them and then Fize jumps into it to do his rider kick and then phases through them and like he appears and lands and then the coolest part as the monster explodes you see the Fize emblem which is a circle with the line through it the whole like not allowed thing and that's also his emblem because the greek letter phi but it's so perfectly mishmashed, and it's like, you have been denied the right to exist. <laughs> and, yeah. then, and then the monster dies. And what's Bust, cool, busted makes it feel good. Yeah. And what's cool is, is that Conrad or Fi has like, made this like signature thing where like when he transforms or he's like about to do anything, he kind of just like flicks his wrist, and it's super fucking cool. Like Anyone who watched Fi's immediately, they, they caught themselves doing it like a few times. I, I've done it all the time. Uh, Wild Knight is asking about the villains. Uh, the monsters are called Orphanox, and the business they work for is called Smart Brain. Yes. Which, uh, sh should we bring up the thing about Masayuki, who played Kiba? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, he is unfortunately no longer with us. Yes, he passed away a while back. Yeah, which I think, mm. which back in 2015, I think I I even remember you guys talked about his, did, his did. passing yes. on extra extra when it first started. Mm -hmm. This show definitely hits harder now. Yeah, uh, knowing that. Mm -hmm. Think of it. He was 24 when he did this. He passed away at 35. Well, what happened? Uh, they they, ne they never confirmed. Like they never announced the cause of death. It was unfortunately just an illness, an illness that he had for what we understand for like ten years, or at least since two thousand twelve. So like the last few years of his life, he was just sick. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but like, man, man, did he make like that character Kiba his own? Because like, if you watch the movie Paradise Lost, he's super important in that movie. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, back to episode two. Remember how we were just saying that Kiba's girlfriend, we, we didn't blame her for anything she did? Episode 2 just throws that right the fuck out the window. Oh, yeah. Because he goes back to her, and she tries to turn him into the police for killing her new boyfriend. And she's like, I mean, the funny thing is, yes, he did it, but she doesn't know that. <laughs> she just decides to be a shitbag and go, I didn't do it, it was him! Yeah, and like the cops even trying to be like, we're not blaming you. But she's just panicky because he turned into sand in her kitchen. Yeah. I mean, Man, that's pretty scary. I, I, yeah, I, get, I get that she's traumatized, and I get that she doesn't want to talk to the police, but, like, sicking the cops on your ex-boyfriend because you don't want to talk to the police? I mean, to be fair... When you don't know that he killed him? He just showed up two years after being in a coma and allegedly dead. Next day, you're your current boyfriend is now dead. Yeah, but he died in a way that would not implicate Kiba at all. He just fucking dissolved into sand in her kitchen. 
what reason could she possibly have for thinking that he did it other than the fact that it happened right after he woke up? There's no other connection. Oh. Yeah. I don't think she's that smart. I think she was just stupid and desperate. She was like, I'm sorry, are you scared? She's like, fuck you, bitch. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you anyways. <laughs> and then he kills her. Yeah, because he just, like, he doesn't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm done with this shit. If you really think about it, he sort of did that so that he could fully embrace his new lifestyle. He was the last, or she was the last lingering piece of his past. Yeah, now he has no connection to humanity. Yeah, so he, if anything, that was like a representation of him giving up his humanity. Yeah, the, exactly. The girl that he loved, fuck her. To death. It, it's sort of like Full Metal Alchemist, freaking... When Ed and Al, you know, after doing the transmutation thing, three years goes by where they're fully adjusting themselves. All right, we're going to go, like, we're going to go fix this. And just so that we know that we can't come back, we're burning our house down. Burn the house down. It, we, we're burning the house down so that there's nothing to come back to. So we cannot give up on this mission because we have nothing left. Yeah. But yeah, so that's... That's Fies. Like, the first two episodes are kind of, like, interesting for how it starts, but, like, as the show goes on, you meet new characters, and it just gets really cool, and the fights are awesome. They end up working out a wonder, man. Oh, yeah, and to, to buy the belt back from the pawn shop, they went around to an amusement park and, like, sold haircuts. How fucking weird is that? They, the, I, I'm amazed that the staff let them do that. Just walk into a theme park and sell haircuts to children. I mean, it's just haircuts. They were able to pay the belt back. So, I mean, they're not an approved vendor. Which I'm surprised Takumi didn't just knock the guy out and j take the belt and give it to Maya later. Be like, here, take it. He's, yeah, like he's that, a ruffian, not yeah, a criminal. Yeah, that's what I want to do when I go to a theme park. Get my hair cut. <laughs> so fun. Hey man, people at conventions get dressed up and makeup at the convention. So again, like what we said with Comrade or Agito, Fives is one of those like really unique shows where it's like we could talk about it for hours, but like you need to see it for yourself. And that it's opening like, theme, oh, oh, so just Fives is just mwah. Which, it's got some pretty good songs too. You even got a song called "People with No Name" by MCAT, who voiced yes. the Ghost Driver. So. The, there are two notable in in show like insert battle themes: "People with No Name" and "Dead or Alive," and I fucking <laughs> love them both. Um, so yes, excellent show. If you like Heisei Kamen Rider at all, before it got super, super gimmicky, absolutely go watch. Yep. And fun fact, it is legally available. Yeah. Sort of. Sort of. The first two episodes are on Toei Tokusatsu World. Well, not even that, but the entire show is available on Toku HD, which also that. is a pro and a con. You have to pay for it. And right now, the trans the subtitles are complete shit. Oh. <laughs> oh, it'll select the ones that I watched on the DVD, because it was in all in yellow subtitles, and they kept mi mistranslating the names, so I didn't so know one who of those anyone terrible was for, like, subs. 20 episodes. Hong Kong subs. Yeah. yeah. But, like, from what I understand, they don't say Henshin, right? They say Hanshin. No. Or... <laughs> they, they don't spell... Hanshin! They don't spell... Spell... On that. They don't spell Orphanoc, right? It's just... Oh. Mm. It's a mess. Yeah. But hey, if Shout Factory ends up later on being like, hey, we got streaming rights for Fies, don't miss out on it. Because after all, the end justifies the means. Oh, is that what that song's saying? Yep. Yes, Gar. It just I don't know. It's a, oh, I just kept hearing this Fies something story something. <laughs> I know they were saying, tell me the truth. Yeah. Tell me the truth, she cheated on me. Did they, make, did they make a Shinchoku Seho Fies environment? Yeah. Or Kaiza. Then we should probably talk about Kaiza's origin, like, somewhere in the future. You mean the most hated man in all of Kamen Rider? Yes. Yeah, I mean, Kaiza was my favorite writer in Fies. <laughs> yep. You know what? Also, also, that one guy who was Delta, like the Orphanoc who used the Delta stuff really Oh, good. Kitazaki? Yeah. He was rad. Oh, you mean Just the Mr. 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 Hmm? Hmm? Oh, the guy with the ripped shirt? The, yeah, the dragon. Yeah, the, the, yeah. yeah, he would like do the hand thing every time he had It was awesome. I loved him. All right, that is Castor Ranger. Woo! Still with us? I was about to say, still with us, Emily? What do you think about Fies? You haven't said much. 
I didn't actually get a chance to watch all of it, um, but I wanted to stick around still to hear you guys talk about it. Um, it seems pretty dark, but I like it. Yeah. I like it so far. Yeah, I want, it's I, a lot of early Heisei stuff. It feels stuff. like the kind of thing that you don't really get as good a feel of it from the first two episodes as you did as from the other ones we've done. Oh yeah, even after these two episodes, we haven't settled into the status quo going forward. I will say yeah, this. So... I'll let you finish, Emily. No, I don't have anything else to say. Okay. I will say this, just as a random thing. Toei uploaded this weirdly with the weird aspect ratio. Because, like, yeah. this was full screen, but, like, on the YouTube version, it's, like, scrunched down. Yeah. It's 2003, man. Yeah, but I, I don't think that was how it was shown on television. No, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they just don't want people copyrighting their work. Masters are hard to get, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's Cast Ranger. Go check out Fies when it's legally available. Yeah. Open your eyes for the next Fies. Open your eyes for the next Fies. Yeah. I remember the final episode preview. Open your eyes for the final Fies. Yeah. <gasps> Jikai, Video Sentai Cast Ranger. So, next week, we'll be talking about the show that was... Also intended to be the final Common Rider show of the Heisei era. I'm so tired of hearing, this show was supposed to be the last one. Yeah. I, I don't give, put any stock behind those words anymore. Don't worry, this is actually the last one for realsies this time. <laughs> I mean... We, we swear! Uh, honestly, no, no, <laughs> honestly that was going to be it. Late. 23 years later. Like, like the producers were going to be like, guys, we're done making Common Rider. We want to move on to other Ishiomori stories. Bandai. But we like money. Yeah. To the toys are selling. The toys are doing well. Guys, we don't care. Bandai literally forced their arm to make another show. Toys just buy the shows. <laughs> so, but I'll get into that when we talk about Hibiki, which you all know we're talking about Hibiki. But yeah. first, it's Blade! Blade! <laughs> you mean card captors? No. Same plot. Sure. And you know we'll be getting into those heated debates you about mean, You mean- Oh, is Garen the secondary writer? Chalice the second- No, it's Garen. <laughs> you mean common writer Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon? Oh, it's card captors. And card captors. It's just card captors. Cards. Like yeah. playing cards. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, my neck! <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen the memes for it, oh. All right. The board. That is the show. Thank you, everyone, for listening, watching, liking, subscribing. I'm back in better quality. Yeah. 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 Thank you for listening. All right. We will see you next time. Uh, as usual, our hijinks are centered primarily around castranger.podbean.com. Gar looks like he has something else to say. Stay Sentai. Damn it. I forgot it last time. Stay Sentai. No. Uh, yeah. Facebook. Twitter, Patreon, Discord, Masks, merchandise. V onesies. Baby Kikus. Cool. Go, go watch Space Jam. Yeah, we're going to watch Space, Space Jam, Jam 2 Space Jam Legacy, Sunday. out now. I rewatched Space Jam 1 on Netflix and I cried because I love it so much. Cool. <laughs> cool, you cried. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.